How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. This time we're talking about 10 cheap and fun family cars that you can buy for under £10,000. Now I've been meaning to do a family cars video for quite a long time so in this video I'm going to talk about 10 different cars that work perfectly as practical cars that you can take your family around in but at the same time you can still have a bit of fun as a car person. So you can take your kids to school in the morning and then head to the track for the afternoon. Okay maybe not the track but somewhere at least fun to drive your car. Don't forget that I'm in the UK so prices in other countries may differ. And don't forget that when you buy any secondhand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, road tax, all that good stuff is important to remember. If you enjoyed the video, do hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. Let's get to a thousand likes and I will do this at under five thousand pounds. And subscribe as well if you want to see two videos every single week. But without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's kick this video off with the Range Rover, which hosts a 3.6 litre turbo diesel V8, making 267 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 8.6 seconds. Now, I personally am not a huge fan of Range Rovers, but I can definitely appreciate why they make such great family cars, and with the Vogue, you get a nice taste of luxury too. This is the third generation Range Rover, otherwise known as the L322, and it comes in multiple different trims depending on what you fancy. Vogue offers a nice entry level of luxury for you to waft around in but you could also go for something like the autobiography special edition if luxury is your key driver behind getting one of these i think either way it's a fun car to own simply because of its luxury although when you hear about the reliability you might change your mind that's because these are renowned for expensive gearbox failures and some electrical issues too as well as problems with the suspension they start at around four thousand five hundred pounds at the bottom end and for 10 grand you get a 2008 example with around 90k on the clock next up we have the jaguar xf sport brake specifically with the 2.2 litre turbo diesel inline 4 engine which makes 197 brake horsepower and will get to 60 in 8.2 seconds. The first gen XF is known as the X250 and was an Ian Callum designed replacement for the S-Type. It had a facelift in 2011 which gave it a few small changes to the front and rear end in particular and added the sport brake into the lineup. This turned it from being a reasonably practical saloon into a highly practical estate that has a total of 550 litres of storage space with the rear seats up and almost 1,700 litres of space with them down, so plenty of room for all the family. Add on the fact that the sport brake provides additional headroom for passengers in the rear and your family can travel in pretty reasonable comfort, all while you get to enjoy a relatively luxurious executive car. 6,500 pounds the minimum that I could find these listed for and for 10,000 pounds you get a 2012 model still with relatively high mileage. There have been a few complaints about interior build quality and electrical problems too that plague JLR. However, the vast majority of XFs have managed 100,000 miles before they've seen any major issues which is quite cool. In 8th we have a completely bonkers compact MPV, the Vauxhall Zafira VXR with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine that makes 236 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 7 0.2 seconds. Effectively, this is an Astra VXR that has been blown up into a minivan, and it shares many of its parts with the Astra. Owners note that the car isn't on par with a sports car by any stretch of the imagination, despite being pretty quick, especially when you've already got it moving with that 320 newton meters of torque. Instead, you have to compare it to other multi-purpose vehicles, and when you do, you realize just how much fun it is to own and drive. I mean, many in the owner's community literally call them buses. A six-speed manual gearbox, sportier suspension and brakes, matching the more aggressive styling on both the exterior and interior, definitely for the parent that isn't willing to let go of their boy racer-ish youth. This is actually the cheapest car on this list, starting at around £4,000 at the bottom end, with 10 grand getting your 2006 model with low miles. Turbos and gearboxes are the main known issues on these, and owners suggest getting belts and water pumps done when you get one, alongside an oil change. A fan favourite in the car world is the original turbo diesel Skoda Fabia VRS, but I wouldn't say it's a family car like some of the other cars on this list. Instead, the more recent second generation VRS estate offers a surprising package with a bunch of practicality. It has a one5 4 litre twin charged inline 4 which makes 177 brake horsepower the lowest on this list but it will still get to 60 in 7.1 seconds. Even though this is a smaller Skoda when compared with the Octavia, it still has 505 litres of boot space and keeps its hatchback style tailgate for easy loading. I had the previous generation Fabia estate and it's probably the most practical car my family has ever had, so with this one being slightly bigger it can only get better. It's cheap to run at 45 miles per gallon combined and has a DSG Autobox 
walk through a bit of sporty fun. If you've watched my recent video on Skoda too, you'll know that these benefit from Skoda's Simply Clever initiative. The one thing I'd say that these do have is a lot of body roll and corners from my experience though, but it's pretty cool to have a twin charged car, meaning both a supercharger and turbocharger to maximise efficiency. These start at around £4,500 and £10,000 to get you a 2012 model with around 50k on the clock. That engine isn't renowned for being reliable though, and many owners have noted that it drinks oil like crazy and fouls spark plugs. It's the same story as the Polo GTI of that era and people say the engines are literally made of cheese. In sixth we have the Ford Focus ST Estate which is a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine making 246 brake horsepower which gets to 60 in 6.3 seconds. I don't think the Estate was made available to the US unfortunately but in Europe we were lucky enough to benefit from what is ultimately a pretty practical but aggressive package. Just under 40 miles per gallon quoted by the manufacturer though expect less than that in reality and a decent boot at 476 litres which is probably enough for most families. The only problem is that if you fancy towing in one of these you'll struggle to fit a tow bar as it has a central exit exhaust. It comes in multiple specs, ST1, 2 and 3, each with their own equipment, but second hand the prices are pretty similar so just go for what suits you. Reviews note that it's one of the best handling hot estates in its price range as well. This is the most expensive car on this list and you'll only just find a couple at under 10 grand if you're lucky, so maybe not the best example but wanted to talk about it in this video. There are some known horror stories with the engine but all in all the majority of owners profess to it being reliable if treated right and left stock. Oil leaks are a known issue but generally reliability looks okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you are make sure you hit the like button I would really appreciate it and subscribe as well if you're new. You'll see that I'm in my new flat in this if you've watched any of my previous videos. Over here you'll see some artwork from Emily Penfold, very very pretty art and I really like it and on this side you'll see some blank wall and the reason for that is because I want to put the 100k black there as in when we get there so please do hit the subscribe button I would really appreciate it and let's get that plaque on that wall. In fifth we have the absolute beast that is the E91 BMW 335D Touring which is a 3 litre twin turbocharged diesel inline 6 which makes 281 brake horsepower and will manage not to 60 in 6.1 seconds. The Touring is a properly nice looking estate in my opinion and it's as good as you can get in the E90 series diesel lineup as there's no diesel M3. The boot's actually not that big compared to some of the other cars on this list and some owners complain that the rear seats don't have much legroom either for what is a pretty big car. It's been quoted as doing 42 miles per gallon though and it's absolutely rapid for a diesel estate. I would recommend looking at a newer example from 2008 onwards which would be a post facelift as these are also slightly quicker with a 5.9 second 0 to 60 time and they have some small aesthetic differences both on the exterior and interior. These start at around £7,500 with high mileage and for 10 grand you'll still be looking at examples that have done around 90,000 miles. Sadly reliable Reliability has not been particularly good on these, with owners complaining about all sorts of issues like the EGR, EGR cooler, DPF, SCR, CBU, etc, etc, etc. I'm at risk at sounding even more like a consultant with all of these acronyms. On to one of my favourite sounding cars on this list, the Volvo V70R, which has a pretty sizeable cult following, owing to Volvo being considered as one of the founding fathers of fast estates. The V70R has a 2.5 litre turbocharged inline 5, which makes 300 brake horsepower, taking it to 6 in 5.7 seconds. I've spoken about this car in a recent video so I won't labour the point too much but it's got unreal specs for an estate with Brembo brakes and Olin's adjustable dampers as well as a Haldex all-wheel drive system. On release it was literally considered to be a rival to the M3 which is nuts. It also beats the 335D in terms of storage capacity and almost matches the Jag on capacity with the rear seats folded down so you'll definitely be able to fit the weekly shop in there and get home quickly enough when you put the car into sport or advanced mode. That that said, owners suggest that comfort mode is probably the best all-rounder. £5,000 minimum that I could find these listed for and for ten grand, you will be looking at a 2005 example with around 70,000 miles on the clock. The automatic gearbox, Haldex and suspension offer the most trouble on these but generally owners on forums are very complimentary. It's a very rare car taking third on this list, the VW Passat R36 which is a properly cool saloon or estate with a 3.6 litre VR6 engine that makes 295 brake horsepower and manages not to 60 in 5.6 seconds. Now the fuel economy on this one isn't quite so practical at 28 miles per gallon so you'll have to work out whether the symphony of sound is worth it for more trips to the petrol station. This is a proper R car from VW with spoilers both front and rear as well as a DSG paddle shift box and more aggressive interior with Recaro seats and the sportier flat bottomed wheel. The estate in particular is the rarer car but in total across estates and saloons there are around 130 left on the roads here in total so not only do you buy a car with almost 
500 litres of boot space, you buy a rare and sought after special VW. These start at around the £7,000 mark, but of course they're hard to come by. Under £10,000 is very achievable and expect around 40,000 miles on the clock for that kind of money. The DSG is the main thing to watch out for on these, so make sure that you take any car you're looking at for a test drive to see if the gearbox changes smoothly. Taking second, it's the Audi S4 Estate, which is a 4.2 litre V8 engine making 339 brake horsepower and managing 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, matching the Passat. This is the B6 or third generation S6, and on release, the key marketing strategy was to big up that massive new engine, taking over from the previous V6. That engine does come with an efficiency downside as it will do less than 24 miles per gallon, even dropping to single figures if you plant your foot, but it does sound unreal so there is that. It's obviously well equipped in terms of performance as you'd expect from an S4, and it has plenty of boot space, more than a 335D again. I weirdly think that this will become a bit of a classic in future, as these performance Audis often do, in part because of that engine, but also because aesthetically it's aging really well in my opinion. These have sat below the 10k mark for a very long time now, starting at 6k, with 10k getting you a 2003 model with 80,000 miles on the clock. The engines are reliable, but the timing chain tensioners are known to fail, and they're right at the back of the engine, so it's a pretty expensive job. If you get one, I would budget enough to also get that done before you do anything else, as you don't want the dreaded death rattle signalling the end of your engine. Taking the top spot, we have the massive first generation Porsche Cayenne Turbo, which is a 4.5 litre turbocharged V8 that makes 450 brake horsepower and will get to 60 in a stunning 4.5 seconds. These are effectively luxury SUVs that like the Range Rover we started this list off with, but I'm personally a massive fan of the interiors on these, with so many different specs to choose from. I really like the tan or the graphite grey, but it's up to you. Though I do like the interior, the exterior I'm not a massive fan of, as aren't many others. However, it has amazing space with a 540 litre boot and 1,770 litres of storage with the seats down, which is huge, plus it will tow up to 3,500 kilograms, which is almost four of my MX-5s. It does, however, have the worst quoted miles per gallon on this list at just 18, so not very practical, but at least it's big and fast. These start at around £7,000, and for £10,000 you get a 2005 model with around 100,000 miles on it. The 4.5 litre block is the more problematic one, with critical failures noted like the cylinder walls failing. Cooling leaks are also common, and the prop shaft has been known to go wrong too. I do hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching it, I do really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below, what is the perfect family car for car people? I'd say probably something like an RS6. But as always, a massive thank you to the patrons for their support, and to you guys as well for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Listen.